Okay, so uh, we will be talking of the uh, consequences of special relativity today, having been introduced to this subject uh, uh, in a previous lecture. Okay, so we will be talking mainly on um, length contraction, uh, but of course before that we will spend some time in, uh, in, in learning how uh, velocities are added in special relativity. Okay. Uh, as opposed to you know, you know this um, the Galilean uh, velocity addition formula that uh, we are so well used to, right? Um, so uh, you know if you want to come to the subject, we just uh, uh, summarize a little bit of what we did last time. So uh, we were seeing we were talking uh, of Newtonian mechanics uh, being invariant under uh, Galilean transformations. Uh, electrodynamics, I mean the laws of uh, electrodynamics, especially uh, Maxwell's equations. Uh, so, uh, we saw that they were invariant under uh, Lorentz transformations. Uh, so, it was a peculiar situation, you know, branch of physics and another branch of physics not being uh, you know, invariant under the same transformation, okay. And uh, it's actually this reconciliation of transformations of uh, uh, transformation laws of mechanics and electrodynamics uh, from a theoretical sense which uh, led Einstein to uh, the uh, special theory of relativity. Of course, having mentioned this, I mean I should also mention the, um, uh, the Michelson model experiment because had that not been there, it would have been very difficult to um, see the, uh, the really need for, uh, for, 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 such, a, for such a theory. Okay, right. So uh, we we recapitulate the postulates of relativity once again. Uh, uh, the principle of relativity um, uh, the states, of course, that the, uh, it's a very it's a ba basic uh, principle. That the laws of physics are to be same in all inertial systems. So there is no preferred inertial system. Okay. So what does it mean? It means that if uh, you are in a system uh, and you do an experiment there and then there is another system which is moving uh, with an uh, uniform velocity with your system, you will not be able to differentiate that. Uh, so basically uh, systems which move uh, with uniform velocity relative to each other, they are absolutely uh, similar in the sense that uh, the laws of physics are going to be the same in, in all these uh, systems. Okay? The uh, the second postulate, and it's it's uh, it's very uh, important here. It's the uh, principle of the constancy of the speed of light. Okay. Uh, so uh, well, I mean, in, in in simpler words, it says that the speed of light in free space it has to be uh, the say it has to have the same value. I mean, I've written c here. I mean, as you know that it's three into ten to the power eight meter per second. I mean, which is well, it's almost 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. We know that it's 2.99 something in all inertial systems. Now, this in the first instance may sound very strange because um, because if you if you think of our everyday experience, suppose you you shine a, a light, say you light a torch, and then in the direction of this uh, light. Uh, let us say you are moving in a vehicle with, uh, with an imaginary vehicle of course in a very fast way. So uh, let us say you are moving with uh, 2 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So what happens? So what speed will you see the light, uh, see this light from your normal experience of Galilean relativity? Okay? So Galilean velocity addition formula and all these things. So the light is moving forward 3 into 10 to the power 8, you are moving in the same direction in 2 into 10 to the power 8. So you are supposed to see the light in 3 minus 2, that is 1 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Well, relativity tells you that no, you are going to see it 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, that is all. Well, we will see how this is possible because if you, if you believe in, in uh, this Galilean uh, transformations, if you, believe, if you do the thing in Galilean transformation, of course this does not come about. So there is another transformation where such thing is possible and that is uh, we saw what that was, uh, that was actually uh, Lorentz transformations and uh, uh, if you, uh, I am mean, uh, just summarizing the transformations once again to you. Um, we have let us say a frame S prime which is 
moving with a certain velocity v, a certain uniform velocity I should add uh, with respect to another frame s. Okay, so they have the let us say the common x x prime x axis here and then a point a general point is x y z and then uh, you, you put in the fourth component the time here and then at the same point from the s prime frame that is x prime y prime z prime and t prime and then these relations are given by the transformation equations uh, which you see here. So, it is uh, x how does the uh, the quantities in the prime frame relate to the quantities in the unprimed frame ok. So, that is so that is the uh, that is given by uh, the uh, Lorentz transformations. So, here you see x is equal to gamma times x prime plus beta c t prime. Now, I have defined what this betas and the gammas are. So, beta is also it is v by c. So, it is uh, dimensionless and gamma is 1 by root over of 1 minus beta square ok. If you write it in this form, you will see that when you write the time component, it has almost a similar looking um, expression. So, of course, uh, instead of time, I multiplied that by c that is the velocity of light. So, that it has the dimension of length ok. So, I got c t. So, you see uh, you see compare this equ uh, the equation for x and compare this equation for c t ok. You see that uh, it contains in the equation for x you have both x prime and t prime and then in the e uh, equation for c t you have both uh, t prime and x prime of course, in this opposite fashion. So, it looks very symmetric. So, it is uh, quite useful to write it in this way, but uh, for the sake of simplicity and because we are doing this for the first time I will uh, use all these expansions uh, uh, when, whenever we come across it. Okay, so, so what are the limits? I mean does this in some limit go back to the Galilean transformation? Well, actually it does. Where does it do so? Uh, at small speeds that is if one is moving with uh, speed much, much lesser than the speed of light here. So, you see v is much, much lesser than c. So, of course, v square by c square that tends to 0 here. Now, you can immediately figure out that x prime it becomes you know this uh, the uh, the uh, the quantity below uh, the denominator for x prime x prime is equal to x minus g t divided by root over of 1 minus v square by c square so this this turns out to be just uh, the galilean equivalent that is x prime is equal to x minus v t and since we are moving along the x x prime direction so the x uh, y primes and the z primes are the same okay now, what happens for the t primes? Okay. Now, it is interesting in Lorentz transformation, the times in both these frames are not the same. They are also dependent on the coordinates on all the space coordinates of the system. It is it's evident from this equation itself. Okay. Now, at small speeds, at small speeds, smaller, much smaller than the speed of light that is, you will see that these times t prime and t they become equal, they become approximately equal actually if you uh, do this, uh, uh, you take v by c to be much, much uh, less than, uh, so it is almost tending to 0, it is much, much less than 1, it is tending to 0 that is. Okay. So, that is the thing that we get Lorentz transformations, they go to Galilean transformations at small speeds. So, that is the, uh, that is the thing, that is the thing. So, at at smaller velocities, Newtonian mechanics is still the thing that one can follow. I mean, that's that's it. That we uh, that's what we do in our daily lives. I mean, we in our daily lives rarely do we go at speeds such high speeds as the speed of light. Okay, so the uh, Newtonian mechanics is valid, is is correct at at small speeds. Okay, but having said that, let's. Uh, now have a look at how velocities are going to be added in these two frames. Okay, so what are the uh, relative velocities, or what's the uh, Galilean velocity addition formula here? Okay, 
I am sorry, let us see uh, the, uh, the Lorentz velocity, uh, the, uh, the Einsteinian velocity addition formula according to Lorentz transformations because the Galilean velocity transformations uh, addition laws we have already done. Okay. Uh, but how do you do it? I mean, uh, the process is similar if you remember. Uh, I have drawn this, um, uh, this, uh, this diagram for these frames uh, once again see x. Oh, by the way, the z axis is always there, it is protruding out of uh, the screen. I have just not drawn it so that the picture looks a less clumsy, that is all. Okay. So, so, how do you find the velocity in each of these frames? You are going to do, you are going to take this differential, uh, this dx by dt. Now, remember the coordinates you are going to take for each frame and then the time which is suitable for that frame itself. Okay. Now, so in the S frame, it is dx by dt and in the prime frame, it is obviously dx prime by dt prime. Remember, in, in when we were doing this Galilean velocity addition formula, this t and t prime were the same, but here they are not. Okay? I mean, just for the, the, uh, for, for the sake of simplicity and just for your remembrance, I have listed it on the left. So, you see that they are not the same. So, if you if you take dx prime by dt, it is not the same as dx prime by dt prime, okay? but you need to take this properly. Now, if you do this, if you uh, do dx by dt and du prime, uh, dx prime uh, and, and u prime is equal to dx prime by dt prime, we are going to land up with the velocity addition formula. And so, how does it look like? So, so what is the velocity in S frame? Um, having known the velocity of a particle or some velocity in the prime frame. So, that is the one given on the left hand side uh, of your uh, uh, screen. You will see that uh, um, if the S prime frame is moving with a certain uniform velocity v, and then in this frame, a velocity is measured as u prime. Uh, this velocity in the unprimed frame is going to be measured as u prime plus v divided by 1 plus u prime v by c square. Okay? So, this is the Einsteinian velocity addition formula. Okay? Yeah, just, just to remind you, had this been the normal or the uh, more familiar Galilean velocity addition, you would not have the denominator here. You just have u would be just u prime plus v, that is all. Okay? But then in some limit, uh, as we said, I mean this transformations uh, go at small speeds, the, the Lorentz transformations become the Galilean transformations. So, too here it must be so. Here uh, these uh, velocity addition formulae must go to the, uh, the Einsteinian formula must go to the Galilean formula at small speed. So, we will check that, we will check that. Okay? So, similarly, of course, you can do the uh, reverse transformations and find uh, u prime is equal to u minus v divided by 1 minus u v by c square. So, that you find, so if you know the velocity in the S frame, so how is it, so what is the velocity u prime you are going to measure in a frame, S prime that is, which is moving away with a uniform velocity v. Okay, so as we are talking of the limits, so at small limits, when u is small, v is small, you immediately see what? You immediately see that this denominator, so u v by c square, this becomes negligibly small, it is almost equal to 0, you might, you might say, so that u prime is equal to u minus v, or if you, if you added, you know, so you are fastidious about this word addition, so u is equal to u prime plus v, that is all. So, that gives us the Galilean limit okay, at small speeds. Right. How about some examples? Let us see what happens if in uh, with this Einsteinian velocity uh, addition formula, where you have a frame which is moving, let us say your S prime frame is moving away with, uh, with a velocity uh, 0.9 c, that is c being the speed of light. Okay? And in this S prime frame, you measure uh, some speed, 
speed of some object you know things can have such large speeds like relativistic speeds some sub subatomic particles do have such large relativistic speeds um, uh, to be like 0 0.9 c right so if you directly go and apply uh, the Galilean formula you know it's 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 you're going to get more than c of course you know that that's forbidden relativity so how is it how is it uh, that comes what is it that comes here so for u prime you're going to substitute 0.9 c for v 0.9 c and then in a denominator you see 1 plus point, 0 0.81 c square by c square and then and, and voila you get something like 0.999 c okay so it's still still less than c right so the, we, we have checked that even if individual uh, velocities we have uh, in this particular case is almost touching c uh, the uh, the the added velocities the uh, uh, from the einsteinian formula it still gives you less than c i mean as it should okay yeah but the interesting case is you might say is what happens if one of the speeds is c itself okay that is if u prime is c uh, okay in s prime frame which is moving with uh, with a velocity some v uh, with respect to the s frame so what is the speed that is seen in u so in other words so this is a case you have let's say your light photon so you have a photon or speed uh, or light which is moving with speed so of course with the speed of light c in one frame what are you going to observe in another frame okay Re with respect to which your frame is moving with a certain velocity v okay so this is a direct consequence you're going to test that is a direct consequence of the second um, postulate of uh, relativity so u prime you're going to substitute by c v is of course the speed with which the s prime frame is moving with respect to the s frame and then the denominator you have one plus c v by c square and what does it give you mm -hmm. it gives you just c okay so that's the speed of light is the same in all inertial frames i mean uh, this we have started with the postulates no wonder that it's so but then at least we have verified here that the uh, einsteinian uh, velocity addition formula that uh, we just use right now is consistent with this postulates okay so just one uh, final example perhaps to find the uh, uh, relative velocities of particles so let's say you have two particles a and b which are moving in opposite directions okay one moving towards the left with uh, point uh, with minus uh, c by 12 uh, where this plus and minus is this tells you the direction the direction is different that's all the vector direction is different so they are moving with speeds uh, half the speed of light okay in opposite directions okay the question is what is the relative velocity of one with respect to the other what is the relative velocity of a with respect to b and what's the relative velocity of b with respect to a well it's very common so i mean we all have traveled in trains so you see uh, when when you travel in a train in a certain direction so if you if you you can you can always feel you can always feel that the train which is moving in the other direction to you is somehow moving what's the what's the relative velocity of that train it moves it moves quite fast isn't it okay and in this uh, so we're going to we know, we're going to find out a similar situation here okay so here how do you do that so we take particle b to be at rest in frame s prime so which is uh, so which is moving with s uh, with, with the other frame s uh, with an uniform velocity c by 2 here so again um, the uh, velocity of a relative to s is whatever what, what is measured in s is is c by 2 okay so uh, what is the relative velocity uh, so what you're going to find is the uh, velocity of a relative to s is c by 2 and therefore relative to s prime and you see s prime is the frame in which b is taken to be at rest so uh, that's the frame we, if you find this uh, velocity 
of a with respect to s prime you're going to find uh, the relative velocity with b that's it so you use the velocity addition uh, addition formula here so that you're using uh, uh, the uh, the primed coordinates here so u prime is u minus v 1 minus uv by 3 square and then you just put in the uh, numbers c by 2 the, per, the perfect uh, the uh, the the, uh, the proper numbers here and what do you get you get 4c by 5 still less than c i mean if it if it had been the uh, galilean way it would be c but here it's 4 by c and what's the other way around the re velocity of b relative to a it should be exactly the opposite right so it's minus 4c by 5 you could have also used the uh, velocity addition formula to get this speed i mean that you can do it as an exercise of course okay right so having now seen how velocities are done let's go to some of the other corollaries of special relativity and especially uh, an interesting thing called length contraction okay so what is it so it just tells you that the length of a moving body appears to be shortened in the direction of its motion okay so if a moving bodies appear to be shorter okay we want to find out how okay so for this let us consider a rod okay the end points of this rod um, uh, are in in s prime let's say so this rod is in s prime and it's at rest on this x axis okay so just consider an uh, unidirectional thing here a one dimension thing here and you have uh, the x uh, uh, the you have the ends of this rod as um, x1 prime and the the other end as x2 prime okay so the length of the rod which is at rest in this frame is you call that at l0 this is you just measure this what, what how do you do so uh, it's not uh, you you just measure you you can take a measuring tape put it on one end of this rod and just put the other one at the other end and they do measure it that's all okay so um, so how do you uh, what do you find that l0 is x uh, 1 x 2 prime minus x 1 prime okay however one thing is to be noted here is that we have not bothered about uh, the uh, time at which these two measurements are done because this thing is at rest so it doesn't we are not bothered about the time okay so you you that's what you do you put you leisurely put one end of your measuring tape on uh, at x1 and then go and put the other end at x2 and then see that the length that's all okay now what happens I mean, if you want to measure this in some other frame s let's say so you want to measure the length of this rod s now remember relative to s s prime is moving with a certain velocity and hence the rod which is at rest in s prime is also moving with a certain velocity with respect to s prime okay so that's it so in this frame s right remember that the rod is now moving parallel to the x x prime axis with a certain uniform velocity v okay now it's very important that to measure the length of the rod in the s frame uh, its n coordinates must be measured at the same instant of time okay this is very important now okay now for this what you need of course you need synchronized clocks and then uh, and, uh, you have two di different observers who are going to measure the end points of the rod here okay so let's say at this particular time t is equal to t0 in s prime uh, in s frame in s frame that is not in the s prime frame uh, the uh, two ends are uh, measured as x1 and uh, x2 okay so what is the length of this rod in s frame you're going to just subtract these two uh, coordinates 
So, you know, L is equal to x2 minus x1 and say, okay, so this is my length in, in the S frame, okay, and relative to which the rod is moving with a certain velocity. But remember, there is a relation between the quantities in the S frame and the prime frame in the in the frame uh, in the x x prime coordinates and the unprime coordinates x which are unprime. So they are given by the Lorentz transformations. Okay, so we use the Lorentz transformations. So what is it again? Just to remind you. So what is x x prime? So that's x minus v t. Now here at a certain so on the right hand side of this equation, so your all these quantities are in the our, our quantities measured in the uh, S frame. Okay. So, and the left hand side is the quantities which are measured in the prime frame. Okay. So, from this, so you, you can find uh, the relations of x1 prime and x2 prime in terms of the uh, corresponding quantities in the S frame. Okay. But remember, along with these positions, the time also enters into this picture, but then the point is that the time you measure this at the same time, you have measured the ends of the rod in S frame at the same time, so it is going to be the same here. So, if you subtract these two equations, what do you get? So, you get x2 prime minus x1 prime that is equal to x1 x2 minus x1, okay. And what does this give you? What is x2 prime minus x1 prime that is L0, okay. So, that is the length of this rod in, in the prime frame and then what is x2 minus x1 that is L that is the length of the rod in the S frame. So, and then notice that the denominator is still there, okay. So, that is root over of 1 minus v square by c square. So, you get this expression. So, what is the length of this rod in the S frame? Remember, it is moving in the S frame, it is as if the rod is moving with a certain velocity v. Okay. We see that it is L is nothing but L0 into root over of 1 minus v square by c square. Clearly, you see that this L, the length as measured in the frame in which the rod is moving, is less than L0. Okay. Well, well, to be very exact, it should be less than equal to L0. I mean, you can even have v is equal to 0 in some sense. Okay. So, if, if v is equal to 0, L is equal to L0. Okay. So, this shows that the length of the rod it appears to be shortened in a frame relative to which the rod is moving. Okay. So, this is length contraction. Okay. Okay, but having said that, let us just uh, uh, be um, familiarized with uh, another concept of the thing called proper length. Um, well, you have just uh, seen that uh, if, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, if this rod is moving with a certain velocity, if it moves with different velocities, okay, it is going to be, uh, the measured length is going to be different. So, if a, a rod has a length L in a frame relative to which it is moving uniformly with a velocity V1 along its length, this is important, it is moving along its length because there, there could be a case where it is not moving along its length, it is making some angle with the x-axis. We will we'll, we'll try to see if we can do that too. And um, uh, similarly, let us say in another frame, uh, this rod is uh, moving with uh, the certain velocity V2 and then the measured length is L2, then um, you must have figured out by now that L1 divided by root over of 1 minus V1 squared by C squared is equal to L2 divided by root over of 1 minus V squared, V uh, V2 squared by C squared is equal to L0. Okay. And what is L0? Well, you can also write L0 in the form of the other things that you have written on the left, uh, L0, L0 by root over of 1 minus 0 squared by C squared. So, it is as if uh, moving in a frame which is uh, uh, which not, uh, which is at, uh, in which the rod is at rest, okay. But uh, what do you see? 
you see that the quantity L by root over of 1 minus V square is invariant, it is not changing. If you change it, uh, so if you change, if you change uh, V, the uh, length changes, but then the whole quantity of the length divided by root over of 1 minus velocity square by the speed of light square, that is becoming invariant in all inertial frames, okay. And this is called the proper length, okay. So, uh, the uh, proper length of a rod is uh, of, a, of, a, of an object is a length measured in a frame in which it is at rest. And it's obviously figured out that this is also the uh, largest of all possible uh, length measurements of this uh, rod, okay. Um, having uh, done this theory, I think uh, it might be useful if we have a uh, a few examples, okay. So, uh, let us again have uh, an observer A and, and, and let this person uh, find the length of uh, a rod to be 1 meter um, and then uh, and also to be uh, moving uh, with uh, velocity let us say 0.8 c, okay. Now, the same rod if it appears to have a velocity 0.6, the speed of light, okay, relative to an ob another observer in another frame, okay. So, see that we have not uh, specified the length here uh, of, the, of this rod. So, the uh, first question that we ask ourselves is what is the proper length of the rod, okay. And secondly, what will be the length measured by the uh, second observer? Okay, relate, uh, relative to which it is moving with uh, velocity point C, uh, point uh, 6 C, not point C, I am sorry. So, what is the proper length? We just uh, saw in our previous slide that it is the length divided by the root over of 1 minus the velocity square by the speed of light square. Now, you do that, you do uh, the uh, length of the rod was 1 meter. So, you have put 1 meter there and then uh, for the velocity uh, was 0.8, uh, so which was like uh, uh, 0 0.64 c square, take the square of that that is and then you see that this proper length is L0, uh, L0 is 1.67 meter, okay. So, this is the uh, length that would be measured in a frame in the rest frame of the rod, okay. So, what would be the length then measured by the uh, other observer relative to which it is moving with a certain velocity, okay. That is simple. We, we call that as L subscript B, L B, that is L 0, 0 in the sense that that is the uh, proper length, L 0 into root over a 1 minus V square by C square and then the V here is 0 0.6, okay, 0 0.6 C that is. So, you find here it is 1.33 meters, that is all. So, so, when it was moving with 0.8 c, the length was point, uh, 1.8, uh, the length was 1 meters. When it was, when the, uh, when it is moving with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a lesser speed of 0.6 c, the length measured appears to be 1.33 meters, okay. And then so, you see the higher the speed, the, uh, the shorter is the length that you want to measure, okay. Right. So, we come over to another interesting case. Now, in the previous cases, we had this rod to be parallel to the x-axis, okay. But now, we are having this rod, let us say it is um, it's moving making a certain angle with the x-axis, okay. So, it is not moving along its length. So, there is a component along its length, along the x-axis and then there is a component along the y-axis also, okay. So, the y-axis and, and also, I mean, uh, the z-axis is also there, it is protruding out of the screen. Again, I have not drawn it uh, so that the figure does not look too clumsy, okay. Now, what we take this rod in the x y plane itself, okay, and then 
uh, this rod uh, it is in the S prime frame where is it at rest and then it is making a certain angle uh, uh, theta 0 and then this S, pri S prime frame is moving with a uniform speed v with respect to the S frame. So, the uh, question uh, that we uh, asked ourselves is that, so what is the uh, length of the rod as measured in the S frame okay? and what angle does this rod make with the x axis in the S frame. Okay, so, if it is with a certain angle theta 0, does it, is it theta 0 again in the S frame? S frame? Well, we were to find out. Okay, so, remember of course, that uh, this uh, S is moving with a certain velocity V uh, relative to the common x, x prime, x axis here. I mean, S prime is moving with a uh, uniform velocity V. Okay, so, what do we do uh, in the S prime frame uh, uh, measure what is the uh, length of the rod along the x axis? It is x 2 prime minus x 1 prime and we are going to find this out to be L 0 cos of theta 0 okay? and then if L 0 is the uh, proper length of the rod that is. And, um, uh, what will be uh, the component perpendicular to this direction of motion? So, it is uh, y 2 prime minus uh, y 1 prime that is simply L 0 sin of theta 0. Okay? Now, when measured in the S frame, okay, now remember in the S frame, this rod is, is moving with a certain velocity with a certain uniform velocity v uh, with respect to the S frame. So, the uh, uh, n coordinates of this rod um, at uh, time, uh, you are measuring this n coordinates of this rod at a certain time t is equal to t 0 here. So, you find them to be x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So, what is this uh, difference x 2 minus x 1 here? Well, it is um, L cos theta. Okay? So, L is the length as measured in the, uh, uh, you know, what that be the length of the rod in the um, in the S frame and then the theta angle uh, is the angle that will make with the x axis in the S frame. Okay? Well, so x 2 minus x 1 that will give you uh, what the uh, along the uh, the length along the x axis that is L cos theta and then y 2 minus y 1 that will be L sin of theta. Okay. So, how are they related? Well, we have just figured out again that it is well by the um, uh, Lorentz transformations of course. So, you use the transformations equations between the prime coordinates and the unprime coordinates and you find them to be well, what it is given on your screen. So, uh, the things uh, you, you it is done at a, a the uh, prime coordinates on the left hand side and the unprime coordinates on the right hand side okay and then the unprime coordinate that's in the s frame the measurement of uh, the length is done at a certain instant okay so uh, you you definitely require uh, two observers with synchronized clocks to do this and then uh, the synchronized so and then the measurement is done exactly at t equal to t0 here and um, since it's the rod is moving parallel uh, to the uh, x x prime axis here, uh, your y coordinates are the same. Yeah, so you, uh, y one prime is equal to uh, y one prime is e actually equal to y one, and uh, y two prime is also uh, equal to y two. Okay. So, uh, now if you subtract uh, x 2 prime from x 1 prime and uh, uh, y 2 prime uh, you subtract uh, from y 1 prime or the other way around. So, what do you get? You get this. You get x 2 prime minus x 1 prime that gives you x 2 minus x 1 divided by root over of 1 minus b square by c square okay? and y 2 prime minus y 1 prime is y 2 minus y 1. So, therefore, you get 
L cos theta which you know to be L0 cos theta 0 which you know to be the length along the x prime axis that is x2 prime minus x1 prime is again equal to L cos theta divided by root over of 1 minus e square by 6 square. It is very interesting of course and then the um, in the direction perpendicular uh, to uh, the direction of motion uh, that is in the uh, y direction L0 sin theta 0 is same as L sin theta 0. Okay, so, what is the um, length of this rod in uh, S frame? Okay, so, we come back to our old question and uh, what angle does it make with the x axis in the S frame? Okay. So, to do that um, all we have to do is uh, divide those angles which you found and we found that we will find that it is uh, tan theta 0 is equal to tan theta root over a 1 minus v square by c square. So, how do you do that? That is simple. Uh, you have this relations L0 cos theta 0 is L cos theta divided by root over a 1 minus v square by c square and then this L0 sin theta 0 is L sin theta. So, we divide the equation with the sin with this equation with the cos and then you get this tan that is all. So, this gives you first the angle now, so the angle is not the same. The angle with which the angle uh, this rod makes with uh, the um, x-axis in the S frame, okay, is theta, and then the angle this rod makes with the S prime uh, with the x prime axis in the S prime frame, that is uh, theta zero, okay. Okay, so just check that they're not the same, right? And then this is the relation you can use to uh, find these angles. What about the length? Remember, L was the length in the um, S frame. So, L square, you know, this uh, very uh, simple identity of L cos theta squared plus L sin theta squared. And we uh, know these, um, what is L cos theta and L sin theta in terms of the, uh, the proper lengths the, in the S prime coordinates, uh, in the coordinates of the S prime frame. So, uh, we get the thing, everything in terms of the proper length, in terms of uh, all the quantities in the prime frame, okay. So, interestingly, this comes, this L, that is the length of the rod, uh, comes out to be L, right. So, L, so what is it? So, uh, in the S frame, it is it's moving with a certain velocity, uniform velocity V. So, uh, that is uh, and the length is measured to be L and that L is equal to L0 that is the proper length of this rod to root over of 1 minus V square by C square and now see that you have a cos cos square theta 0 ok. So, what is theta 0 that is the angle the rod makes with the x prime axis um, that is the uh, frame in which it is at rest ok. Okay, so let us spend a couple of minutes with this uh, equation just to see whether it is right or not and whether uh, remember when we were uh, doing some uh, uh, land contraction formulae earlier it was L is equal to L0 into root over 1 minus V square by C square and then the rod was moving along its length. So, if we put theta 0 is equal to 0 so that that simulates this um, the system or the rod to move along its length, we get back our old length contraction formula. Okay, L is equal to L0 into root over 1 minus V square by C square. Okay, but what happens if you put theta is equal theta 0 is equal to pi by 2? Okay, that is perpendicular to its direction. Well, L is equal to L0 then. Okay, so if uh, it is moving perpendicular to its direction. So, the perpendicular component that is not um, the contracted. So, let us be more specific. So, the component of the length parallel to the direction of motion is length contracted by a certain amount dependent on the velocity. Okay, and that quant uh, the quantity is root over of 1 minus v square by c square and the component perpendicular to the direction of motion is unaltered. Okay. 
Right. So that being our idea of length contraction, uh, in the uh, next segment, in the next uh, lecture, we're going to talk of another consequence of special relativity, and that's called time dilatation. Till then, goodbye.